Hello and welcome to another Excel demo from Rich Kirk. In this scenario we're going to look at data validation uh, but this time we'll talk about creating a data validation list that is powered by a named range. So I'm going to set up a very basic list of data. In column A I've got a header there, invoice number, and I'll start with invoice number 1000 <coughs> and I'll create invoice number 1010 and I'll select both cells there and I'll use the auto fill handle and drag down a few cells so as sort of a side uh, feature here we're looking at the ability of Excel to extend a numeric list okay now let's go to cell B1 and I'd like to type in the word terms so I want to indicate whether the invoice has terms of net 30, net 60, net 90 you've never worked in retail or invoicing before what we mean by terms is the number of days that we're giving the customer to pay uh, after which point we'll be calling our attorneys or sending them to, to collections or withholding any discount on their product or whatever <laughs> whatever repercussions we want to hold over the head of our customer for not paying on time so in this case <clears throat> I'm going to go to sheet 2 in my workbook and on sheet 2 I'll zoom in a little bit here I'll type in uh, net 30, of course it helps if I can spell, right? <laughs> net 30, net 60, and net 90. And I will select this range. And let's say that those are the only terms we want to use with our customers. So I've got that range of A1 through A3 selected on sheet 2. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll go to the name box. So the name box is the area above the spreadsheet that shows you the address of the active cell which is right now uh, A1. Uh, when I click there I can actually type in the name of the range. And there are other methods of creating named ranges that we'll discuss in other videos but in this scenario I'm simply going to type terms and hit enter. Uh, you must hit the enter key when you type a name for your range in the name box otherwise it will not record that name and you cannot have a space in the name of your range so if you have more than one word just have it all together or use an underscore. Uh, one of the beautiful things about named ranges, and there are many, <laughs> but one that we really like is that it is uh, globally accessible throughout the workbook. So I'm now going back to the sheet in my workbook labeled invoices, and I'm going to select a corresponding range of cells in column B uh, adjacent to those invoice numbers. And now I'll go to data validation. I'll choose the settings tab and in this case when I go to list under the source field I'll type equals terms so instead of a comma separated list of values uh, so one method would be to say net 30 comma net 60 etc uh, but since I've got a named range set up I can simply refer to it uh, with the equal sign sign and the uh, the name of the range now I'm not going to bother with an input message that pops up telling the user what I want them to do but I will go to the error alert tab. On the error alert tab this time I'm going to use the less strict uh, warning style as opposed to the stop style. So the warning style will allow the user to enter a value that's not from my range uh, even though uh, I've got that set up I'm just going to let them know that uh, they didn't pick from the valid list but it will let them override so my title might say something like are you sure and then the message might say uh, that is not a standard uh, term for payment we'll click OK and now my cells have the drop down showing the values from the other sheet so that named range is accessible and I didn't have to refer to the sheet name when I set up my named range uh, as the source of my validation list. So we now have that drop down. Now I use the less strict warning style so let's say someone were to type in net 45. That's not one of the terms that we set up but because I didn't use the stop style the user has the option of continuing anyway. So I'm going to click yes and purposefully put in a value that's not from our specified list and I'll do another entry maybe here we'll do uh, we'll do net uh, 
net 15 again saying yes to continue and then finally for the last one I'll do uh, net 30 now one of the things that we like about the data validation tool is that after the data has gone in I can use another component of data validation to audit my spreadsheet so there is a drop down arrow adjacent to the data validation icon on the toolbar or ribbon and when I click it you'll see the choice there that says circle invalid data so when I click it the two cells that don't meet the validation criteria are circled in red so now I know which cells I have to take a closer look at or change etc uh, keep in mind about those circles they're what we call a volatile function so they do not stay permanently the moment you save your workbook they go away uh, or even after the auto save uh, time frame has expired and your workbook does an auto recovery save they'll go away but you can always go back and turn them back on uh, so again that's data validation using the list style validation and that list is supported by a named range that has the acceptable values thanks for checking in and I hope to talk with you again soon with some other Excel demonstrations have a great day